My name is Peter Goethe. I'm a director of the Nordic Cochrane Center in Copenhagen and professor of research design and analysis at the University of Copenhagen. And I was first educated as a biologist and then didn't know what to do. And uh, my granddad, who was a family physician, then said, why don't you go out in the drug industry? So I went out in the drug industry and I hadn't been there long before I thought, how come that people eat so many drugs? It can't be healthy for them. And I also realized that people were cheating in the drug industry, so I, I needed to get out. But I, I took the worst way out, that I took another education, becoming a doctor while I still worked for the industry. And then I did trials in the industry as well. So then I became a doctor and I did a meta-analysis, uh, or several meta-analysis, and defended a uh, doctoral dissertation on meta-analysis. Uh, I was the first in the Nordic area and maybe in the whole world who defended a thesis on meta-analysis within healthcare. So when Ian Chalmers in Oxford wanted to start an international collaboration where we went through all the randomized trials uh, on a given subject and analyzed them critically and then wrote a review about them and published these reviews electronically and updated the reviews when new trials were uh, published. So when all that came about in the beginning of the 1990s, I was the only one in the Nordic area that Ian Chalmers in Oxford uh, could see uh, might wish to join him and could provide some input into the whole collaboration. So I was one of these 80 people who started the Cochrane collaboration in 1993. And then four years later, I left clinical medicine. I'm a specialist in internal medicine in order to only do research. So that's what I have done since 1997. The organization I belong to, the Cochrane Collaboration, is named after a Scottish epidemiologist called Archie Cochrane. And many years ago, he criticized us doctors. He said, why is it that we don't have systematic reviews of all the randomized trials on a given treatment so that we know what that treatment does to people, its benefits and harms? And such systematic reviews should be regularly updated when new trials become published so that we all the time know the value of that particular treatment. We didn't have that. And then he singled out pregnancy and childbirth as the specialty which was least based on good evidence. And Ian Chalmers in Oxford, uh, he then started with some colleagues to do systematic reviews in pregnancy and childbirth. And many years later, when my wife was pregnant with our first daughter, uh, my main job was to keep uh, doctors and midwives away from her because they wanted to do all sorts of things. And I referred to these systematic reviews and told them again and again, this either doesn't work or it's harmful, so you shouldn't do it. So they became more and more interested and I told them where to look up the evidence so that they became better doctors and midwives. Uh, then uh, in uh, 1993, uh, Ian Chalmers uh, established the Cochrane Collaboration, which was about all areas in healthcare. So uh, we now have, uh, I think it's 53 review groups that work with different things. For example, it could be uh, liver diseases or infectious diseases and so on, which collect these randomized trials and do systematic reviews of them and publish it all in a database that many countries uh, subscribe to. The governments have paid national subscriptions so everybody, including patients, can go up and see what is the value of these treatments. So this is, uh, this is what we have done for 21 years now. And um, I, I can't remember the exact number, but I think we are around 6,000 reviews now. And more than 30,000 people all over the world are engaged in the Cochrane collaborations. And many of these people they do the reviews in their spare time. They, are, they don't receive funding for them. They, they, they do them because they want to help.